Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review of the Samsung T7 Touch Portable USB SSD. You'll receive the SSD, 18-inch USB-C to USB-C cable, 18-inch USB-A to USB-C cable, and a quick start guide. This is the drive. It measures three and a quarter inches wide, two and a quarter inches long, and a quarter inch thick. On the left hand side is the USB-C port, which fits either cable, and is of course reversible. The brushed aluminum case shows the device name on the back, while the right hand side has the model number and serial number. On top of the drive is a half inch square fingerprint reader and Samsung's branding. The SSD weighs only 2 ounces. Compared to my Galaxy Note 9, the drive is pretty small and has a footprint the size of a credit card. To set up the password and fingerprint security for this drive, plug it into a USB-A or USB-C port on a computer using one of the cables. The LED around the fingerprint scanner will turn on. On your computer, navigate to the drive in a file explorer. It'll be called T7 Touch. Launch the installation file for your Windows or Apple OS, and follow the instructions on the screen to install the software. It'll ask you whether or not you're in the EU. Once in the software, you can rename your device and activate security with password only or password and fingerprints. Select the password you'll remember. If you forget it, there is no way to recover the data on the drive. The second part will ask you to scan a fingerprint. For this step, you have to scan the same finger multiple times. Lift and rescan your finger in different positions so it can get a full scan. You'll see the progress bar in the software increment as it recognizes more and more of your fingerprint. After you're done, you can save another fingerprint up to a total of four. In case you want a backup or want to add a trusted second person to give access to it. The process is the same. When you're done, you can start using the drive. If you don't want to secure the drive and have to enter your password or scan your fingerprint each time you plug it in, you can turn security mode off. But if you do so, your password and fingerprints will be deleted, so you'd have to go through this process again. You can manage your fingerprints too, which lets you delete or rename them if multiple people have access, or if you use different fingers. Let's benchmark the speed of the drive. I have it connected to the USB-C to USB-C cable. The read and write speeds are above 400 megabytes per second for sequential read data and just about 100 megabytes per second for random 512K read and writes. When I switched the cable over to the USB-A to USB-C, the results were actually pretty similar, which isn't surprising given that both types of ports on my laptop are USB generation 3.1. What this means in practical terms is when moving large files, like these videos, which total close to 2 gigabytes, this operation took about 6 seconds. When you unplug and subsequently plug in the drive, if you try to access it without entering a password or scanning a fingerprint, you'll only be able to see the installation files and a text document that says this is a read-only partition. Notice that the two video files are not visible. If you try to add new files to the drive, it'll say there isn't enough space or that the drive is write protected. After logging in and scanning your fingerprint, then you can access the other files on the drive. The other cool thing you can do with this drive is plug it in directly to a smartphone with a USB-C port. First, you'd have to download and install the Samsung Portable SSD app on your Android phone. Then connect the SSD to your phone's charging port and scan your fingerprint. For me, there was a bug where the app never recognized the SSD was connected. Although after scanning my fingerprint, I was able to access the drive's contents and view the secured files on it. However, that means you wouldn't be able to use the password to log into the SSD, since the app can't see the drive. So hopefully, this bug is fixed in the next app update. Other than that, I thought the drive worked great. 
It's small and compact, has fast read and write speeds, and keeps your data secure in the event the drive gets lost or stolen. So I can use it to back up sensitive personal data, important work documents, or even just to offload photos and video from my phone when I'm on vacation. It's available in 500 gigabyte, one and two terabyte capacities. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.